This video will be a continuation of our exploring the new rotary option in Aspire 9.5. I'll leave a link to the two previous videos in the comment section down below. The, we're going to start this with going into Aspire 9.5 and loading the project as we finished it on the last uh, video that we did. We were creating a piece that looked like this using these profiles. In this video, we're going to add a, a contour to the right, the, the side of the spindle that's to the right of the V. And we will add to the left of the V a six-sided con tapered contour. It'll be at the diameter that is the edge of the barley twist here and go down to the bottom of the V. So, let's get started. We'll maximize this screen. The contour is going to be real simple. We will go down to the bottom here. Click on this. Then we're going to click right up here. Right there. We will space bar to close that. <clears throat> I'm going to select this. We will hit N to node edit. Right click to change it to a bezier. We will move this guy up just a little bit. We'll move this guy down just a little bit. And that is going to be the contour that we use. We'll go get the scissors. We'll click on this. We're going to select this to make sure it is, to make sure this is all one joined uh, vector. And it is, so we're good. Now what we'll do is go turn on the rails that we used the last time. Go to the Modeling tab, Two Rail Sweep. Click on the rail. Shift click on this side. And we're going to use that selection. Now we'll click on this. And we will um, merge this with the lowest points of the previous component. And we will hit apply. We'll go down here and see if we can see this. And here's our contour that we're going to put on the right hand side. Now, let's go back. We'll maximize this. And we're going to work on the six sided contour that we need here. In order to do the six sided, we're going to have to make a, a kind of a cross sectional shape, unwrap it, and then uh, do a, another two rail sweep to apply it to this section of our part. So let's do that. We'll close this. We're going to go back to the drawing tab. We're going to get the polygon tool. It's set for six sided and the diameter of the part is uh, two and seven eighths. So we put that, divide that in half. This is asking for the radius. It's uh, 1.4375. We will create that part and we're going to select that and then we're going to use this tool over here, Unwrap Selected Objects. We will click on that. It's going to bring up a, a uh, <coughs> excuse me, a dialog box here. We're going to use the center of the contour simplify the unwrapped vectors and we're going to hit apply we will take this vector hit the nine key rotate it and now i'm going to drag that vector down here just to kind of get it out of the way we're done with this one we can delete that we will close it. We're going to do the same thing now for the other end. The dimension on the other end is 1.0625. We will create that. Close. Select. Unwrap. We will hit Apply. And we'll close that. We will select this. Nine key to rotate, rotate, move. Oops, got to select it first. We 
we will move that guy down here so we kind of have him where we want. Now uh, we can get rid of this. Now what we need to do is um, come up here and give ourselves a rail for a two rail sweep that goes from where this uh, uh, barley twist stops to the bottom of the V bit. To do that, we're going to start off. We've got the rail sweep profile uh, layer turned on, and there's some rails in here from previous work that we've done. We're going to delete those rails because they just kind of get in our way and we don't need them anymore. So we'll come up here, we'll delete that. Now we'll go get this tool, come right up from here. Click, come over here, come up, click, spacebar to stop, close this out. We're going to select this vector. We will mirror vertical, and that gave us that same vector up here. Close, <clears throat> go to the modeling tab, two rail sweep. I'm going to, this is already selected. I will shift select here and we will use those two rails. Now what we'll do is select this guy and apply it right here. We will select this guy and apply it right here. We will merge to the lowest points and we're going to say apply. And now, so we can kind of see that a little bit better, here's the way that uh, second part is going to come out. So we've got the parts modeled. Let's go over to the tool path, and we will um, come in, make a roughing tool path. Whoops, I forgot one thing. We've got to go back to the uh 2D view here, and we need to, we're going to be machining this part right here of the spindle. So what we need to do is to make a, we need to make a vector that goes around that part that we're interested in. So we can get over to the tool pass side, we can machine just that vector and we don't have to machine the whole thing again. So we'll come in here and we're going to go from right here up to here. We will drag that over to about right here. And we will go up. And there's our vector that surrounds the area that we want to uh, machine. Now we'll go back to the tool path side. We will hit the roughing tool paths. Uh, I happen to have a three quarter inch ball nose. We will select that guy. And that looks good. And we will calculate. When we preview that, we'll see that it's going to come in and Kind of make some steps there for us so that we removed uh, some of the material. Good. Close this out. We'll come into the finishing tool pass. We'll use an eighth inch uh, ball nose around the selected vector. Let's make sure our vector, yeah, our vector is still selected. That's good. And we will calculate. And we can preview that. It will show it to us flat and then wrap it. And this is the part that we'll have. Now realize that what we did was we're assuming that the rest of the part has been machined. So you may look at that and say, well, that doesn't look like the part we wanted 
actually see and you will be absolutely correct we're going to reset the preview and preview all tool paths and now it might come out looking a little bit more like what we were thinking it would uh, it would display okay that's the way the part is good we will close this we can come over to the save the tool path uh, we'll select just these two because the part has already got the others selected making sure we've got a four axis we'll save this and uh, we can save that under contour only and um, we will be ready to take it out to the machine and run it. Let's see what happens when we try to run it. We have our part in the machine and uh, this is the part that we ended the last video with. The first pass of this will be to do a roughing pass that will go in and uh, carve out a lot of material in preparation for the finish pass. Running this at normal speed in just a bit here, we'll uh, speed this up to 10 times. Now here's a place that if I had it do over again, I would do something different. Uh, this is a roughing pass and the size of the step over was kind of, I, I could have extended that. I could have made it a bigger step over because I know I'm doing a roughing pass. So this took longer than what I uh, anticipated because it was doing a pretty small step over on this uh, router bit. Just a uh, little bit of advice for next time there that you can uh, of course edit the step over. Uh, for a roughing pass and make it a lot faster. Okay, it's just about to the end of the roughing pass. Change the bit and go to a uh, tapered eighth inch tapered ball nose. <clears throat> we'll let this go for a little bit and um, you get kind of an idea of how it's machining. Then we'll skip to the middle section so that you can see what it does there and then kind of skip to the end. This is going 10x. Here we're looking at the middle section. It's just about done with the contour and then you see it start going up and down. Now it's carving the uh, six-sided tapered contour.
let that go for a little bit and then we'll kind of skip to the end Getting pretty close to the end now. Now we'll uh, move the cutter head away, take the part out, and let you take a look at it. Again, nothing very interesting as far as the shape, but hopefully give you some idea as to how the uh, Part, how a part like this would be machined. And here's the part. I hope you learned a little bit on uh, how the rotary option in uh, Aspire 9.5 would handle different two different types of contours if you got any comments be sure and put them in the comment section down below we'll see you in the next video